Hello, for those who don't know me, my name is Mr Vernon, the head teacher at the City of Leicester College. I know that even in normal years, the Key Stage 4 options process can be quite stressful for families because you want to make sure you're as informed as possible and making the best possible choices. For students, the most important thing is that they are motivated and driven to succeed. Some students might be driven and motivated by the career choices they have in mind already, and for some students it might simply be because they love the subjects. I want to reassure you that all the information that you need is contained in this short video, the options booklet that you'll have in front of you, and also the, the video we're putting together from subjects. If there are any questions that you have that are not covered in this video or the options booklet or the video yet to come, please feel free to contact myself, any of the heads of department or Miss Libri for any questions you might have. I hope that you find this video really informative and I want to thank you massively for all the effort you've gone to to support your child in this process. Hello, my name is Miss Libri. I'm the assistant head for the curriculum at the City of Leicester College and I'm here to doing a short video to tell you about the year nine options process this year in a bit more detail so that you can support your child through this really important process and next step in their in their educational lives. So the timeline of events, you will have received this on a letter from me. I'll just go through it again, just so you can see how things are mapped out over, these, over this term. In PSHE lessons, your child has been learning about careers in the workplace and talking about um, the options process. Last week um, was the subject evening for year nine where you were able to talk to your child's teachers and find out a bit about their progress across their subjects. And then today we're releasing the options handbook where we have put together all the different courses on offer for your child that they can choose from to study for GCSE. More about that in a couple of slides. Then in February, just after half term, we're gonna release an options video for students to be able to watch and for you to be able to watch with them, of course. And then in March, at the start, Year 9 reports will be sent home. So you'll get an update about the progress that your child is making across the different subject areas. Um, and this should feed into that discussion about which subjects they will be best suited to. Then they will have some interview preparation in their PSHE lesson, which will lead nicely into the option interviews, which are going to take place in the week beginning the 16th of March. So there's lots going on. Um, but hopefully that's clear at the different stages of this process. So the curriculum handbook, which we are sending out to you today, this is designed for your child to read from cover to cover. OK, and in it, it has a copy of the course option grid. So it, it maps out which courses students can select from each of the three elements. There's an introduction from the head teacher reminding students of important information to consider when selecting their courses. And then a page for each course giving detailed information about what the course includes, how it is assessed and what careers it links closely to. I would really encourage um, your son or daughter to have a good read through and look at all the course pages rather than just think, actually, I like this subject and this subject, I'm going to ignore all the rest. I would encourage them to keep their options open. There will be some subjects in there that they won't have studied before, that we don't study or teach at Key Stage 3. Subjects such as business studies, um, sociology, okay, it's an opportunity to find out about some of those GCSE courses and what they entail. It might be something that your child would really enjoy doing, okay, or it might not, but it's worth finding out about. OK, so here we have the key stage four option choices. We have element one, element two and element three. Element one are the core subjects. OK, so these are all compulsory. These are the subjects that every child in year nine, year nine, sorry, will be studying as part of their programme of study. In element two, we have the EBAC subjects and how this is what they're referred to as. Okay, students must choose at least one subject from this category. They can choose more than one subject from this category, but they have to choose at least one. That's everybody in year nine. 
And as you can see, separate sciences, I've asterisked there. So that is an option on top of taking the core science. If your child opts for separate sciences, they will get three GCSEs rather than the usual two across the three different disciplines, biology, chemistry and physics. However, to take that, your child will need to have at least a current target grade of a six in maths and science. OK, to be suitable for the demands of that course. And then we come to element three, which is the open element. Students can choose up to two subjects from this category. And these are all the other subjects that we offer. So in total, students will study three option subjects. However, we want them to select five. OK, one from element two and then two first choice from elements three or two, and two reserve choices. Because of timetabling and other similar constraints, okay, not every child, not every student will get their first choice. That won't be possible. However, we will try our best to give your child their first choices in their subjects, okay, and certainly making sure that the course that they are on is completely suitable okay for them but we do need to have those reserve choices just in case that doesn't quite fit in terms of numbers for groups um, and other th things that we need to consider so it's really important they also research and think about what their reserve choices would be okay i've, I've referred to the eback and i just want to explain this very briefly uh, the english baccalaureate is the full term for it okay and it's a collection of subjects that are considered desirable by some universities when they're selecting potential candidates. So students achieving a grade five or above in the following subjects will be considered to have achieved the English Baccalaureate. That's English language, maths, two sciences, a modern language and history or geography. Okay, a modern language at the City of Leicester College would be French or Spanish. So the EBAC combination, of course, is nationally recognised in giving students the strongest foundation for further academic study. Those students currently achieving grade fours across all of these subjects and wishing to pursue academic further study, particularly in highly competitive areas such as law or medicine, may wish to consider selecting the English baccalaureate or EBAC route. OK, they don't have to and it won't stop them doing some of those things later on in life. But like I say, um, some universities do consider it to be desirable. However, the most important thing is that the subjects that students take are the ones that they are good at. OK, it is better for them to take a subject that they're going to be successful at rather than try and battle through a subject just because it's on the EBAC pathway that they don't enjoy and that they find really hard and are not so good at. It's better always for students to take subjects and get higher grades in subjects that they can do really well at okay but i just thought i'd make it clear what that is and um, you might well have heard of the eback okay move so after half term in february we are going to be releasing the options video now usually you would be we would be inviting you into school for an open evening where there would be all the different subjects set out for you to go and visit in stalls. OK, but of, of course, we can't do that at the moment in this season. So we're making a video instead um, and there'll be about between two to three minutes of footage on each course answering some of the questions your child might have. Students will be able to see who teaches that course and find out more from them directly and students will get a flavour of what that course would be like to study. It's also really important to mention here that there are some subjects this year because of the pandemic um, and because of some of the restrictions around how we've had to um, teach our lessons that have meant that more practical subjects like the arts subjects, okay, or the, the creative arts and, and things like art and product design, where students haven't been able to engage with the practical elements. So it's really important that they try and think not just about their experience they've had in year nine, but what the course says their experience will be, okay, in year 10 and 11, when we 
hope and expect things to be back to um, much more of a normal way of doing things, okay, and a normal experience of those subjects. So your role in all of this is helping your child make the right choices. OK, there are a few things I would suggest if you've not been through this process before with a child to think about. So first of all, discuss. OK, talk to them. What are their opinions? What are your opinions? What questions do they have that you may be able to help answer? In terms of careers, some students will know exactly what their end goal is. OK, they will know that they definitely want to do dentistry, for example, at university. They will know um, what A-levels are required to get onto that course, which university they want to go to. Then they might be thinking already which GCSEs they want to take in order to gain those A-levels. And they'll have it all mapped out, which is fantastic. OK, and that's great. Others will be less sure. They won't really know at this stage what they want to do later on in life. And that's OK, too. OK, at this stage, both of those are absolutely fine. Um, but it's good to be having those conversations to think about what subjects would be best for them or would they perhaps most enjoy and be successful at in years 10 and 11. Researching is key. So the options courses in the handbook, the handbook is a really key resource for your child to look at. The options video, which I've explained about. Teachers emailing and asking their teachers using PSHE lessons to have that discussion and answer questions and some of the assemblies that I've been doing, okay, watching those and getting all the information that they need. In terms of choosing the right subject, they need to base the decision on their work, okay, not friends or teachers, so if their favourite teachers teaching that subject or their friends are doing it, they're not really good enough reasons to want to study something for two years, okay. They need to choose subjects that they are good at and that they enjoy. And that's what I've kept repeating so on um, throughout this video. But they are, I really do believe, um, key criteria. And then finally, they need to justify, help to make them, um, help to enable them to justify um, why they want to make those choices. So when they come to interview and have that discussion with us, they need to have a good reason for every choice that they make. So finally, thank you very much for listening. OK, GCSE choices can be some of the first big decisions that students make. Thank you for your support of them during this important process. And if you have any questions um, in the course handbook, there are questions subject related. There's an email address for each different head of department for the different courses. And um, if you have general questions about the process, then feel free to email me as well. I've added my email address below.